Hey, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team, and welcome to this tutorial on creating and using nested selectors in Generate Blocks Pro. Nested selectors allow us to create global styles in a way where we can attach multiple properties into one global style, much like you would do if you wrote the CSS by hand. So for example, we can have one class on our cards that handle spacing, border radius, and a lot more, all in one single global style that's reusable all over our site. So let's take a look at this example I've set up. As you can see, I have this simple little three column grid and inside of that, there's an image. We have a generate blocks headline and then just a regular paragraph block. What I want to do here is space this image out from the headline automatically. Of course, I could go click on each one of these elements in this card layout and add bottom margin, but that's clunky and we don't need to do that with global styles. So I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And then the other thing I wanna do is, for example, this text here down here at the bottom, we can see that through our generate press global styles, by default, our paragraph bottom margin is 1.5 EM. So if this paragraph ends at the bottom, we don't want that extra spacing. And I'm gonna show you how to dynamically remove that as well. All of this is gonna be done using CSS nested selectors through generate blocks. So let's go ahead and jump into the back end. So here's that same setup in the back end, and you can see that I have just a simple container. I have a global style I created for grid and then a little bit of gap between the cards. And then on each card, I have a global style called card wrapper. Now, again, the first thing we wanna do is space out the image and our headline, and we're gonna do that with a nested selector. So what I'll do here is click on my global style, and what I can do is go over here to the more tab. There's a number of other selectors that are built in, really common ones like hover and focus states, which are great, but we can also add our own custom selector here. So I'm gonna click on new. And what I'll do here for the selector, the image is actually wrapped in a figure tag, which is really common. So we're going to just type in the word figure, and then I'm gonna click on create. Now we can see what's actually happening here is our selector has become dot card hyphen wrapper and then figure. So any figure element that follows a class of card wrapper will now be affected by this global style. So what I can do is just go to spacing and just for exaggeration's sake, I'm gonna do a bunch of space here. So like three rem, and you can see right away that applies to all of these cards because of course they all fit the selector that we've now configured. So that's of course really awesome, but there's many more ways we can take advantage of this. I'm gonna reduce this margin to something that doesn't look so silly like one rem. And now let's say we wanted to add some border radius to the top left and right corners of our images to kind of match the border radius we have set on our card here. So what I'm gonna do is go back to this more button. I'm gonna click on new and in the selector field, I'm gonna type in figure followed by the child combinator symbol here. And then I'm gonna type in the word image. We don't actually want to apply the border radius to the figure because we want it to be on the image. So we're gonna click on create here. Then under border, we're gonna to go to border radius. And again, just for exaggeration's sake, so you can actually see this, I'm gonna type in border radius of 24 pixels. And we can see that applies to all corners of all of those images. Now, like I said, I only want it to be on the top left and right edges. So we'll go ahead and just delete this. Then our top left border, let's set to four pixels. And then top right, we'll set to four as well. So very subtle, but now there's a nice rounding to the top left and right edges of those images. Okay, so let's go ahead and update this and take a look on the front end. And let's look at the CSS that's actually taking place here. So if I go ahead and inspect this figure tag, we can see that exactly the CSS that we configured in Generate Blocks is what's output on the front end. So our dot card wrapper, and then the figure tag, and then that margin bottom of one rim that we set. Same thing is true on this image. We can see card wrapper, figure, and then the child selector for image, and then the border top left and right radius of four pixels. So really clean and optimized output on the front end as well. There's no trickery happening here. Now, the next thing I wanna point out is if I inspect this headline element, we can see that our H2 here has a margin bottom of 20 pixels, and then also our paragraph here has a margin bottom of 1.5 EM, and that's coming from the default settings from Generate Press, which in this case I haven't changed. That'll ensure that no matter what type of element is last in our card, there won't be any erroneous extra spacing, at least from the margin bottom aspect. So what we're going to do is again, go back to our global style here. We still have our card wrapper selected. So we're gonna to go to more. Then in this case, I'm gonna add yet another selector. And what I'm gonna do is use the descendant selector again. We're gonna add a space, and then we're gonna use the pseudo selector of last child. Then I'll click on create. And just to touch on exactly what this selector is doing, it's finding any element that has the class of card wrapper. 
then it's going to find the direct descendants inside of that. And anything that's the very last element inside of that card wrapper class will then inherit whatever properties we set here. So in this case, I am just going to go down to spacing and set margin bottom to zero. In this case, just kind of zero it out. Because of the way that the block editor adds some extra spacing here with that black add button, we're not gonna see it quite properly in the back end. So let's update this and then we'll go refresh on the front end and we can see right away now that paragraph has margin bottom of zero because of that selector that we just created. So again, just to demonstrate, if I were to take this H2 and now move it to the bottom, I'll update this, go view on the front end. And again, there is no margin bottom on that H2. Again, that means that no matter what element ends up last, there will be no extra margin bottom, which is super, super cool. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is create one of those common card styles where the image touches the left, top, and right edges, but then the content inside of it below has that padding around it. So what I'll do is come back into my card. I'll take this headline and put it back up here. Then let's add a container. I'm gonna drag the paragraph in here, and then I'll just quickly do that a couple more times. Then what I wanna do is go back to my main card wrapper class and where I have this spacing of one rim padding on all sides, I'm just going to remove that. Then what I'm gonna do in this case is go to more, add new. We're gonna create a descendant selector here and just look for a div, which is our container that we just added. Click on create, spacing, padding, one rim all sides. And just like that, we're getting that effect where the card touches all of the edges and then the content is nicely spaced out from the outside edges. So let's go refresh on the front end here. How cool is that? So all of those styling changes that we just applied to this card are inside of one global style. Now you can take that and apply this to any card across your whole site and all of these selectors that we just created are going to be brought in with it. The border and the box shadow from the main selector, as well as our spacing, our border radius, our last child, removing the margin bottom, and the extra padding on that div. So how awesome is that? Nested selectors are super, super powerful as you can see. They do require a fairly good understanding of CSS but these are fairly common properties, things that you can just easily Google. And once you kind of know some of the basics like the child and descendant combinators, the things that you can start to do with these compound selectors are super, super powerful. I hope this video has been helpful for you. Again, my name is Jonathan with the Generate Press team. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.